Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Marbella Muro, and I'm the Director of Artistic Programs and Education at Self Help Graphics. I want to welcome you to the Artist Lab in the Studio Series. The Artist Lab supports and promotes artists of color and seeks to maintain the creative community connected. We'll begin by acknowledging that Self Help Graphics resides in Apachangna, currently known as the Los Angeles neighborhood of Boyle Heights, where the original peoples of the, this territory the Tongva, Shumash, and Tataviam were first displaced. Tonight, I'm honored to welcome six of the seven artists invited to be part of the Veterans Atelier, which we are also calling Transitions. A transition can be an emotional, mental, and or even physical passage from one point or state to another. For this atelier, self help Graphics invited a multi-generational group of military veteran artists whose paths led them to transition from civilians to soldiers to artists or, different, um, or in different order. The seven artists will, uh, well, tonight's the six artists will address the themes already embedded in their practice or the artists work uh, address themes already in, embedded in their practice or they also explored new concepts through a serigraph print that they created um, and, uh, and actually are creating. While self help graphics has always been a home to a community of veterans who sought the arts to manage PTSD or connect to a community of artists, Transitions will be the, is the first veteran focused suite of serigraphs printed at self help graphics. Uh, tonight's artists uh, include Joe Devera, Fanny Garcia, Gina Herrera, Yvette Pino, Pedro Rios Martinez, and Peter Tovar. Uh, the, the seventh artist is uh, Leo Limon, our dear Leo Limon, and um, he will be part of a different conversation uh, that is scheduled for June 4th. It'll be a conversation with a former youth committee member, Jake Montoya. We'll provide those details um, towards the end of the program. So the atelier started uh, as of last year, um, as you see on the, the first card, it's been a year long process because of COVID. The conversation started at the end of 2019 and Peter and Joe uh, printed in the studio in the spring of 2020. And we are currently concluding with Gina who is joining us from the studio in the ne next room to, uh, to me. And so it's been a long process of, and just reconnecting and bringing everyone all um, together again. So it, it's, it's been, you know, bittersweet um, seeing everyone and just be keeping in touch, uh, keeping uh, connecting with uh, one of the artists during our print summit. But I'm glad we're here together again. Uh, some of the artists had the opportunity to print in person and others did not and uh, did the partnership or the conversations and collaboration with uh, Dewey, the master printer virtually. Um, if you can change this, the, the screen to the second page. Let's see, oh, sorry for the, if you can go back to the previous one, I'm sorry. That one. So here you can see some examples of our first meeting in the studio. Um, and Fanny and Yvette couldn't join us. So you can see at the bottom screen a uh, picture of them joining us remotely. There are some images of Leo, Pedro, and Peter uh, printing and the, the virtual process that uh, Fanny and, um, and Dewey were, were uh, working with as they would call in and with Yvette as well, call in and make sure that the color is correct. And, um, but in the end, they, we've been managing to uh, produce some really beautiful artworks. So with that, I wanna thank you all and also Dewey uh, for making it happen um, after a whole year. So we'll begin with each artist briefly speaking about themselves and their work. Then we'll, we'll move to a panel discussion and the last five to 10 minutes, we will open it up to for questions from the audience. Um, the audience, you can put your questions in the chat area of YouTube. So I'm honored to introduce Peter. 
Uh, Peter is a seminal artist in the Chicano art movement of Los Angeles. He is a founder of Bodega Colores, on-site gallery boutiques at Self-Help Graphics in East Los Angeles. Peter was born in San Francisco and grew up in Campbell, a small area outside San Jose. And he began painting after being drafted to become an airplane mechanic in Vietnam. He continued to paint after the war, and in February 1994, he had his first solo exhibit at self help Graphics, Galeria Otra Vez. The exhibit consisted of a series of acrylic paintings, and his next, uh, oh, sorry, a series of acrylic paintings. Thank you, Peter. Welcome. Uh, I, uh, I started with self help Graphics in, in 1974. I got out of the service in 72. I uh, was uh, I was in Vietnam for a couple of years, but after that, it was hard for me to get a job uh, because of my service, uh, because of what was where I was from, where I had gotten out of Vietnam. And uh, Sister Karen had, uh, you know, had I had interviewed with Sister Karen about uh, becoming a uh, a teacher with the Body of Mobile Art Grant and. I was lucky enough to get the job. So that was one of my very first jobs out of the military. I, uh, you know, very fortunate to have started uh, with some of the original artists at Self-Help Graphics. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, very fortunate to have uh, gotten the job with Self-Help Graphics. I, I, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of though is uh, in 1989, uh, I got, uh, uh, Sister Karen was allowed me to open up a folk craft store there. And it was very, very successful. And so I'm I was very pleased with that outcome. I did have to leave after about five years due to my health. So I, uh, you know, I, I have been printing every now and then with self-help. I paint in oils mainly. I, uh, you know, I've just, uh, I've met a lot of, lot of artists. I mean, I, I, I'm lucky to say that I know many, many artists here in, in the Los Angeles, uh, on you know, the Chicano, for, Chicano artists. So, and, and others, of course. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm pleased uh, that we have put together a program or, or a atelier for uh, veterans in particular, because uh, you know, it's been a long, long time since we've heard from a lot of the veterans uh, in regards to their artwork and, and seeing their visual, uh, what, what they vis do visually. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of that. And I think the, that's about it. Peter, um, there are uh a few works on here. Uh, what lies? I know you printed at Self Up Graphics, and I'm leaving myself is a painting you did for an exhibition we had in 2020 um, as a result of you know the, the many things that were happening last year. Um, do you, would you care to elaborate on any of the works that you we have here? Well, on the print lies, uh, when when I left Vietnam. I, <clears throat> I, it was hard for me to get a job for one thing. And uh, so I wanted to express some of the feelings and emotions uh, that I had on returning. Uh, at the bottom of the, you'll see an X'd out red line there. That was the red carpet that us veterans uh, from Vietnam and, and other areas uh, during that time were not welcome back. And uh, mm -hmm. I did work um, uh, in uh, a, uh, a medevac hospital. So I, I was, uh, I have seen a lot of death and I just wanted to express that in this particular print. So that's, that one's, that's what that one was about. And that's Thank one you. of my most important prints. I feel. But it, it's really beautiful. It's very stunning in person. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. All right. So 
now I'd like to introduce uh, Joe Devera. Joe was born in the Philippines during the time of political turmoil and violence. He enlisted in the United States Marine Corps from 2001 to 2008, serving two combat deployments. His work often attempts to make sense of the absurd theaters of human tragedy, exploring the possible relationships between histor historiography and art objects while simultaneously investigating the cultural networks of mass conflict. His exhibition record includes solo and two person shows in Philadelphia, Connecticut, and Southern California. Joe Devera received his MFA in painting and printmaking from Yale School of Art and his BFA in painting from Cal State University Fullerton, where he also served as an adjunct lecturer for several years. Welcome, Joe. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, so at this point, I guess I'll show my screen. Or yes, please. Share my screen. Uh, Let's see, slideshow. One sec. Sorry. Um, all right, so uh, can everyone see that? Is that shared? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Um, let me, uh, at any point, if, if anyone um, has a question or uh, wants me to stop the slide or you know would like to see another slide um, previous and want me to return to a slide, I know we don't have a lot of time. Uh, feel free to just interrupt me. And uh, forgive the background noises. Um, my office space is sort of uh, unavailable at the moment. So I have to be out here, which is nice in Southern California. Yeah. Um, so if there's anything, you know, uh, any background noises, I just, uh, um, I apologize. So yeah. No, so, we're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, uh, so my initial paintings began as sort of investigations of my experiences and scholarly interests. Um, again, as mentioned, I was born in the Philippines um, and I was young. Uh, my, my parents sort of escaped with me uh, here in the U.S. And then I sort of, you know, joined the Marine Corps after high school and served a couple of combat deployments. And that sort of, all those experiences kind of informed um, my work. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I took sources from government photographs and personal photographs and documents and sort of amalgamated them in my paint practice uh, as a sort of attempt to, you know, find a common thread or underlying truth or sort of maybe a reclaim. So I'm just going to go through um, some of my work. I was also interested in creating sort of sculptural installations, um, you know, things that could simultaneously be viewed as like aggregates of weaponized material and, uh, you know, marshaled victims of sort of the military complex. So I liked that sort of dichotomy. Um, okay, you hear planes overhead, there's an airport next to me, so. Uh, and a lot of this too is exploring themes of vulnerability. Interestingly enough, uh, there's, you know, it's, it's about human vulnerability, but you know, there's not much fit human figure in a lot of my paintings and installations. Um, I'm also interested in sort of leveraging vulner vulnerability through different material languages, you know, focusing on machine machinery, uh, inanimate things, things like that. So. And sort of, you know, it's a push and pull practice, uh, painting, installation, sculpture, uh, and sometimes printmaking here and then. So it's, it's, it's great. Uh, to kind of have this opportunity um, with self-help graphics. I really love my time um, making prints. So, yeah. What is this, what is this made oh, of? What is that submarine? What is... Uh, yeah, it's made the of uh, uh, these. Mm -hmm. oh. No, the, the submarines are like the, those. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Um, it's made of, actually, It's there's a fancy long word for that, but it's actually insulation foam with a lot of spackle joint compound um, and enamel. 
So, um, and this was installed in um, in a deserted cabin in Joshua Tree, which is I thought kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I could go on, but so yeah, there's my work in a nutshell. Can you uh, talk about, because um, I do remember the, the whale and I believe the horses that you use, mm -hmm. they're made with materials from um, discarded materials. Like this one's their parachutes. Can you talk about that connection? Like you're talking about vulnerability, but also talking about you're using these materials, um, discarded materials that are used um, in the service. Can you talk about that connection? Uh, yeah, you, you know, uh, the, the materials I, I kind of get are a lot of them are found objects or materials I've had, and also military objects that I've sort of collected to make as sort of my art forms. And I kind of like that sort of the assemblage quality of, you know, making the, the sort of animals and, um, and you know, the whale um, are, you know, sort of really big overarching, uh, you, you know, figures. Um, and uh, kind of it, it's it's transformative for me, you know. It's like it's taking, you know, it's 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 taking kind of power from one place and then turning it into another thing, um, and at the same time working with the gravity of the materials as well is really interesting to me. Like the parachutes, um, turning that into like uh, uh, another form that sort of that makes it feel heavy. At the same time, is really sort of. I'm sorry. Um, um, you're you're breaking. Them, they're in, in kind of in another language. Oh, oh, my internet is unstable. Okay. Uh, I was like, I hope it was my back. There, you're back. Just can you okay. recap All right. a little bit? Of, no, if you can recap a little bit of what you just ended with, because it broke. Um, the okay. internet was. Sure. Um, yeah, basically, I you know really interested in using very specific. Um, you know, personal and also uh, collected material from the military and kind of leveraging them in, in kind of new forms to talk about vulnerability instead of their um, initial purpose. Uh -huh. um, and kind of, you know, in, in kind of, you know, making my own sort of point of power. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's stunning, stunning work. It's, this whale oh, especially is just amazing. Yeah. And then oh, we have, yeah, thank you, Joe. And then next up, we have yeah, no Yvette. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Uh, that was beautiful work. Thank you. All right, yeah. Um, both you and Peter. This is exciting to see each other's work, so thank you. Um, I'm going to start sharing too, but, um, you know, my work is, I'm leaning a lot toward curatorial projects lately, and seeing this work is like my light bulb is going off, so thank you. Um, I will start sharing. I created a uh, PowerPoint that's just gonna scroll through the images as I talk so that we can uh, keep this going. Yvette, do you yeah. want to, are you gonna talk about your bio or should I read it? And I don't oh, mind. You can, I, you can read I, it. I don't yeah. mind, I don't mind. I don't know if that's incorporated as part of your presentation. Uh, not really, if you wanna, I mean, um, okay. I, I, just in case. So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Here we go. So Yvette Pino is a U.S. Army veteran, and she was assigned to the 101st Airborne Division, where she earned the rank of sergeant. Uh, sergeant Pino was deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2003 to 2004. While serving, Pino found a sense of solitude in creating works of art. Her commanding officers recognized her skill and appreciated her artwork, earning her the unofficial title of division artist. After receiving her BFA from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Pino founded the Veteran Print Project, which is how I came to learn of, uh, of Yvette's work. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I will talk just a little bit about that. Um, I decided to go ahead go ahead my military background since that's what we're here talking about today is our military experience. Uh, hang on, I think my microphone just got unplugged. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Okay, so um, sorry. As you heard in my bio, uh, I was a painter. So I volunteered to paint and I became the unofficial division 
artist, which meant I painted these really large scale uh, murals, we call them, but really I was painting giant 30 foot by 60 foot helipads, um, concrete T walls, which we called Jersey barriers and anything that they could imagine needed painting, I would paint. So uh, I got to keep the paint, that was my gift. And what you see is the um, paintings, the largest scale that I had to do was in Tikrit, Iraq uh, here in 2005. I had three weeks to paint four 30 foot by 60 foot helipads um, outside. And I wrote home to my mom and said I was painting the world's largest sand painting because we had uh, sandstorms on a daily basis. Um, and that work painting while I was deployed led to me getting to know all of the people I was serving with because people love to watch other people create. So they would gather around me and talk to me, which really was um, the basis for what I would then do after I got out of the military, which is return to art school. I started painting at first, and this is my self portrait of my boots. Um, and I was really um, wanting to, um, go into painting and then I discovered printmaking, which I attended community college at St. Louis Community College and learned about print processes and really looked at screen printing and layered screen print and installation based projects where I was cutting up my prints. And then when I went to the University of Wisconsin Madison, I started learning about etching and my work remained autobiographical, but much more literal. So I was trying to find a way to visually depict the experiences I had while deployed in Iraq for two different tours uh, a year each. So the, the images here are starting to really put visuals to what I couldn't communicate verbally. Um, and then I started breaking down those images and abstracting them. Um, and part of that was uh, the, because of the new processes I was learning like relief and lithography, but it was also um, history was starting to reveal itself about what I was really doing while I was in Iraq. And I felt like um, telling such a literal picture uh, wasn't going to work for me from a storytelling perspective. And so you start to see these really abstracted symbols um, to tell stories in different ways through mythology. Like this is the Cadmus, um, which is in Greek mythology, it also finds its way into Islamic mythology. And taking these symbols and these layers really helps me communicate uh, my stories uh, more um, cohesively. And the one on the right is called Choose Mary. So you start to see Catholic iconography come into my work. Um, there was something about going to Catholic mass as a kid and seeing the stations of the cross in the church, being able to break down this story into 12 different sections. Um, so I'm returning a little bit to, uh, I'm starting to walk away a little bit from my military subject matter and start to return to something that uh, some of the stories uh, that I'm, con you know, conflicted with about my, my youth before the military. Um, I did really enjoy etching, studying with Francis Myers at UW and Francis made us put every sort of, every way in which you can create an etching on one plate. And part of that was to teach us how to do the processes, but also to think beyond simple line drawings and how to create these textures and these, these layers in your images to tell a lot of stories. So the images you see here have uh, are still military subject matter, but they're no longer about my story. I created the Veteran Print Project to pair veterans with artists to exchange a dialogue. And from that dialogue, uh, and it, uh, the artist makes an addition of prints. Uh, so the veteran doesn't make the artwork, the artist creates an image from the conversation. Um, and these are the prints, uh, the resulting prints of my work from conversations I've had with other veterans. And what I found as a veteran artist is it allows me to meet somebody of a different branch of service, a different gender, a different um, background than my own to expose my own biases that I have against uh, other people in the military and, and learning that your experience may be similar to somebody else's, but there's so many different layers that you can, um, you know, different pathways you can take that experience. Uh, so 
uh, we'll talk a little bit about, about healing later. I know you wanted to talk about healing, but one of the things I wanted to mention is that with the Veteran Print Project and with my own work, I've always said, if healing is a result, that's really great, but we don't seek out healing for this. We're, we're not an art therapy project. I'm not, quali I'm not a qualified art therapist. Um, the purpose is dialogue and to really start um, bridging that gap between civilian and veteran. And that model works not just in the veteran community. We've used it with scientists to try to teach about ecological conservation. We've used it with other um, institutions. So I really am just striving to create bigger dialogues between communities. Uh, this is me partnering with Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design students. Um, we're starting to create prints. Uh -huh. um, and these pictures, like Joe, these could go on and on, but I wanted to just kind of give you a quick preview into my, uh, my work and the work with the Veteran Print Project. It's hard to talk about them simultaneously in a short period of time. No, it's a lot of work that you've done. And also, um, I can't hear you, Marvea. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear me, Yvette? I can hear you. Yvette, um, try maybe something on your uh, computer. Can you hear any of us or just, I don't think she can hear anyone. No, I don't think she can hear us. Um, maybe try your, your microphone. Oh, well, it did see, she can't hear us. Well, we'll um, Lulu will help you um, through the, the chat. Lulu, can you help her with the chat? So we're gonna move on uh, to- Sorry. Sorry. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yay. I am Sorry. Mic. Okay, maybe it was a microphone. I'm like, I was speaking to you. I'm like, oh, you should do this and you should, you should do that, but you can't hear me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I can hear you now. No, I, I think I just wanted to quickly say um, that, yes, it, it's a lot to talk about in such a short period of time, especially seeing how you, tr your work has also evolved from like really delving into painting and then to one type of printmaking and then going into another type of printmaking. But then you also, as an artist and as a, as a teacher, you've really grown um, and expanded your, your um, pro the veteran print project um, extensively. And I mean, that's, that's a whole artwork within itself. So yes, you can work, talk about it simultaneously, but it's a lot. It's a lot of work and a lot of dedication that you've you've put in there, and it, it's great. Um, I mean, I've seen when I was introduced uh, to your your program, you know, it's like, oh my god, this is amazing the work that you're doing. So thank you, Yvette. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So now we're gonna transition to Fanny. And Fanny, there you go. Fanny is a first generation, ah, sorry about that. My text got lost. Here we go. Fanny is a first generation Salvadorian American artist from Los Angeles based in Oakland, California. She's an army veteran who served in 2010 to 2013. After leaving the military, she received the ABFA in photography from California College of the Arts in Oakland. Since graduating, she has led various art workshops with combat veter veterans in her community. Her work has been shown nationally and internationally at the Cala Gallery in Berkeley, California, the National Veterans Art Museum in Chicago, Illinois, and Sun Studios in, Sun Studios in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Fanny. Thank you for the introduction. I'm so happy to be here today and to see everybody's work. I joined the military when I was 19 and I joined wanting to be a photographer. I specifically asked my recruiter, I wanna be a, a combat photographer because I had already um, become interested in photography when I was in high school. And when my recruiter said the job wasn't available, I became a truck driver instead. So in this first image, this top left image 
is a, a, a silk screen or serigraph. Uh, and, and everybody's having lunch on a truck. You can't see the truck, but you can kind of see the machinery of the truck. And so this is a depiction of people that I served with and I wanted to um, sort of like what Yvette was saying that straight um, photography wasn't gonna work for me. I needed to transform the photograph. So I, I often work with my own photographs and then I transform them using different mediums. So I work primarily with film photography, uh, uh, silk screens, and, and more, more recently cyanotypes. So the cyanotypes are the blue images in the middle. And then the right hand side is uh, examples of my most recent work, which is black and white photography called The Room by Truckee River, which is, um, there, it's a series of self-portraits. There's a cat coming through here. Uh, it's a series of, of self-portraits and I'm only showing these two because um, I wanted to show you the examples of the different mediums that I, I work with. And let's see, uh, most of my screen prints have um, military themes and most of my photography, like just like my straight photography, I, I tend to deviate from the military just because I don't want it to be a photograph of something that happened in the military. So I use photography, like straight photography to like experiment with other themes like self-portraiture. Um, I just find that cyanotypes and printmaking um, translate like military themes into a different way. And what else should I? <laughs> oh, I can't hear you now. I'm, no, I was on mute. Sorry. Um, I, I'm sorry. I don't have a picture of this, but there's an installation that you created in an exhibition where you had a combination of photographs you took in the military and then also, um, the like um, objects from like the uniform. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so that was that was completely experimental. I, I had a vision that I wanted to recreate locker, the locker that they assigned to us in basic training. And because I just remembered it so like it was just ingrained in my in my head that I needed to see it again. And so I found a wall locker that looked similar to what I had. And I still had all my military uniforms and I organized everything the way I had remembered them, like telling us you need to put all your uniforms this way, like dress right dress. And I wanted to bring that um, experience through an installation to people that didn't know anything about the military. Like I wanted to sort of bring them into that world by immersing them with, with objects that they could walk around. I like, I remember I, I had this, these boots, I had like my military boots and like my trousers and there was no body. So the, the trousers were just like hanging on top of the boots. And so I wanted people to walk around and look into, into the trousers. I put um, like a girly underwear with like pink, like pink color so that, so that people would um, see that this was like a female body. Because I think often when we think about the military, people think that it's like a male or like, I, I feel like a lot of female veterans can relate to this where it's like the the military body is like a a male body so I sort of wanted to break that stereotype by including <laughs> that that pink girly underwear yeah there's um so if uh, you get a chance go to Fanny's website fannygarcia.com and you can see in images of that installation and you also have portraits of of, of female uh, uh, service women and uh, so it was a really interesting um, 
way of engaging with with that I guess a, a window to that world mm -hmm. a very small window yeah mm -hmm. exactly well thank you thank you okay and now we have I have the pleasure to introduce Pedro Rios Martinez and let me Okay, so Pedro Rios Martinez identifies as a self-taught artist, painter, and sculptor, and sees, he sees his work as a form of communication and expresses what he sees and has experienced through color. His art career began in 1967 after attending a Mexican art appreciation class at the El Paso, Texas Community College, where he built a set design for the McCalligan Canyon uh, Amphitheater. Pedro was the scenic artist for the the scenic artist for the ballet and opera guild while studying art at the University of, of Texas in El Paso. That's right. He also helped restore a mural at the Continental Museum. After working on several motion picture productions in the El Paso area, he relo relocated to Los Angeles in 1984. He studied at Otis Parsons Art Institute in Los Angeles and East Los Angeles College and attended workshops at Self-Help Graphics where he began exhibiting his art in a more formal setting. In addition to commissions, he has particip participated in various group shows, solo exhibitions and numerous restoration projects. Pedro continues to work and show his art out of his studio and located in Los Angeles. Welcome, Pedro. Hello, <laughs> glad to be here with everyone. Um, well, I was, um, I was born in, in, in Stockton, California, and uh, I was, uh, they took me to El Paso at a very young age. And uh, so it was a very interesting uh, childhood because uh, we used to go to Juarez a lot, Juarez, Mexico. And uh, just remembering the colors that uh, we used to see with the piñatas and, 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 and just uh, the, the, the Mexican way of living. Uh, and, so all that was part of who, what I grew up with. Uh, I got introduced to art at a very early age uh, at elementary school when I first, when they first gave me my first crayons, which I had never had before, or a pencil for that matter. And so uh, that kept going through high school. I, I did most of the art projects for the school. I, I did the mascot for the, uh, 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 I, I did the clay mascot for the elementary school and uh, it continued through, uh, through high school. And after, um, after I got out of the service in 67, uh, again, uh, as you said, I, they started a, uh, uh, a art appreciation class, Mexican art appreciation class at El Paso Community College. And that was really what I, uh, I saw as, as what I really wanted to do. And so uh, uh, again, uh, my career has gone from, has always been in the art field. So it's, I've been very fortunate. Um, so in, as you can see in some of my paintings that I have, I do use a lot of color. Uh, I, I touch on, on social issues like uh, against, the, against the wall, which is the, the one on the bottom right. Um, and that has to do with, uh, and that's also a multimedia uh, painting. It has uh, oil, it has acrylic, it has Sharpie, and it has crayon. And so um, I like to experiment and do different uh, uh, mixes of paint and color when I, when I work. And so on this particular one, again, it has to do with social issues being against the wall. Uh, and you know, what has happened in society in the last four years, I mean, this is just right up there with the, uh, you know, uh, the police brutality and, and, uh, and government, the way it ha has behaved in the last four years. Uh, so that's one, one of the, and the one in the middle on the lower, on the, that also has a lot of color that uh, angels in flight, uh, and so that again is, uh, is uh, what I'm basically, uh, I use, again, I use a lot of colors. I use a lot of 
uh, movement. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's just uh, it's, it's the creative process of, of enjoyment and, and, and acceleration on, on the brush, the brush stroke. And so it, it's, uh, it's part of what I, what, I, what I do. I also do sculptures. I do uh, wood sculptures. I've done some murals. Uh, commission murals up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, I've done some bronze sculptures, commission bronze sculptures for, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, for Ed Roybal, uh sculpture that sits at City Hall here in LA. Oh, well, I, I, I forgot to mention that I, I came to Los Angeles in 1967, 68. I mean, 78, 60, 77, uh, 78. Uh, I moved back from I moved from El Paso to uh, California, and, and this is where I've been all this time. I've gone back and forth. I've had exhibitions in Juarez, Mexico, um, in uh, in El Paso, and here in LA. Uh, so, other than that, I just uh, you know it's like um, I cannot say that being a veteran has promoted my art and me, but. Uh, if it has, it has actually been my medication, I guess. And uh, I got out of the service in 67, so uh, I was only there uh, for two years. So um, I'll continue to do the art. That's what I do. Uh, I got involved with self-help when I was here. I did a lot of etchings. I did a lot of mono prints. And I... I totally enjoyed it. This has been my home for a long time, for a long, Pedro, long time. And, I, I wanted uh, to ask you uh, about um, your ex or your um, childhood and um, also, like you said, you went going back and forth and showed in Ciudad Juarez and you grew up in El Paso. I'm wondering how that experience in such uh, living in such, so the, the close proximity to this border town um, has influenced your work or it has it influenced your work? And well, no, it has influenced my work. Uh, again, uh, just uh, uh, the artists from, uh, well, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a kid, uh, we used to go to Juarez a lot. And so we used to see all kinds of artwork, uh, not as much in El Paso. We were limited to, uh, to the museum. I didn't go to the museum in El Paso until I was like in high school, like in the 12th grade or something like that for the first time. <laughs> so uh, not, but I had gone to the museum in Juarez. I had gone to uh, uh, just a colorful city. It was a very colorful city. It's like going to Alberta Street, but in a, in a, in a bigger, bigger uh, uh, campus. And so um, it, it, it influenced me. And, and when I met artists from El Paso, like uh, uh, my professor uh, uh, Martinez at East LA College, he also helped me. He also encouraged me. He, uh, he liked what I was doing as an artist. And uh, he's still a friend of mine. Uh, he still lives and he's, in, in, he's probably hitting 90 at this point or more, or more than that. But uh, yeah, it was, and during the time that I was at, um, at, uh, at the University of Texas, uh, I, I was doing the, uh, the, the, I was a cynic artist there, but I was also working with the president of the art department on his pro private uh, um, works that he did. And I, I used to restore art for him. Like uh, if it was an oil painting, I would restore that. If it was a acrylic painting, I would restore that. Uh, if it was a tempera, I would restore that. He would put out whatever I need to restore for him. And so uh, I did a lot of restorations at, at that point and I learned a lot uh, just by doing that and mixing paints and mixing different mediums. And um, I still enjoy doing that. I still truly enjoy doing that. But uh, Living in El Paso and 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 just seeing the life uh, uh, that I had was uh, quite quite a life. Uh, there were people coming across the border, and they would uh, work and go home in the afternoon. And they would work in El Paso and go back in the afternoon. 
one of the paintings that I have, which I didn't show here, is uh, the actual uh, uh, the transporters that would bring the people from across the river on on tire uh, tubes, and uh, they would bring them in when the when the tire was kind of high. The water they would put them on the they would charge money to bring you across and to come and work, and then they then you would go back. So there's a lot of stories that I. That where I grew up. I grew up in a, in a in an area where they called uh, Isla de Cordoba, which, which now is the uh, Chamisau National Park. In 1967, uh, President Johnson, uh, 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 that's when the treaty came into, into play. Before that, Isla de Cordoba was no man's land. So it was just the, the, the Mexican government, it was on, north of the river. The Mexican government couldn't come into the to the to the uh, Shamisal, and the American government couldn't go in there until they did this treaty, where where um, you know the, the lands were uh, distributed. But before that, it was no man's land, and that's where I grew up. And so, <laughs> so you can imagine. Thank what you, was going Pedro. On there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. You're here, and that's what's important. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome Gina Herrera. So uh, born in 1969, Gina was raised in Chicago and currently resides in California in uh, Bakersfield, California. She has a BFA in art education from the School of Art Institute of Chicago. In the course of her studies, she was deployed overseas in support of several war contingencies with the United States Army. Once her final tour was complete, she obtained an MFA from the University of Art of the Arts in Philadelphia. As a graduate student, she was awarded a provost fellowship, an MFA scholarship, and, a, and nominated for the Joan Mitchell MFA Foundation Award in 2012. Herrera received a full fellowship from the Harpo Foundation Native American Fellowship to attend the Vermont Studio Center in 2013. She has exhibited extensively throughout California and nationally. She has been privileged to receive recognition for her work through grants and several awards. Her dedication to service, to service extends to all aspects of her professional life from the 20 years plus in the military to educating and inspiring the next generation as an art teacher at Arvin High School in Bakersfield and adjunct professor at Bakersfield College. Welcome Gina. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's an honor to be here and among fellow veterans. Um, we all know what it's like to do the bump and grind in the military. So we have interesting stories from different experiences. Um, I would like to share screen if that's possible. Um, I just want to show like a precursor of what inspired me um, to make the work the job. Um, so maybe I didn't do that. Okay, so these are images that I took when I was in Iraq. I know a fellow a couple of my fellow veterans were in Iraq, but at different times. Um, Gina, so we don't this see was your, and your, Joe your kind image. Of oh, no, no. Oh, I, I hit sh uh, share screen. Let's Let me try see. it again. One more time. Let's try now. Does okay, it work? Here we go. It, it's it's starting. It's loading. No. Up. It's loading up. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I can't see it. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody else see it? No. Oh, there we go. Yes, no. There. We, I see it now. Oh, well. We see it now, Gina. Is seeing it? Okay. Um, okay, good. So, so basically, this was like when Joe was showing the pictures of the graveyard of Maine that kind of reminded me of my images that I took. Um, this was another area of Iraq that I was in and, and was, you know, acres and acres of, of trash, of U.S. trash that we left behind. And here's another one where, you know, you have propane tanks and other pallets and cars and all kinds of stuff. And so I kind of, when I was standing here, I kind of questioned myself wearing the uniform. Like, why am I wearing the U.S. military uniform when we're leaving our stuff behind? And it kind of hurt me. 
it kind of made me kind of rethink of me as being an American and what am I doing to another country? Um, so, so that kind of made me start to think a lot about my practice and things like that. So on to a better picture. Um, this is me <laughs> at uh, Point Reyes gathering stuff. So I drive my husband crazy <laughs> because he said, we've got to carry all that. So yes, um, one time I had a family who helped us carry a bunch of stuff to our truck. So it was a, a group effort. You know, I like to clean up the ocean, um, trying to do my small part that I can do. So that's kind of what, how I gather my materials. So I'm going to stop sharing and uh, you can show my pictures, please. So, so yeah, so I am a gatherer. Um, I gather a lot of stuff and I kind of, you know, I think that being in that graveyard in the military kind of really put the amount of garbage that we, we put onto our planet in such a context that was mind boggling. And I remember when I went to go get my MFA in Philadelphia, I kind of questioned my practice because I, I went in as a painter and I was an oil painter. And I kind of wondered like, why am I going to promote environmental consciousness when I'm using really bad materials? So that's when I rethought my practice. And then I start using found materials and and I used to go around Philadelphia and I gather garbage because, you know, every Tuesday they had garbage out. So I gather stuff and I started making small installations and things like that. And that's how my practice grew. And it was very monochrome at that time. I think it was very monochromatic because I just returned from Iraq. Um, so I was really having this kind of perplex feeling like, you know, am I still there? Am I here? You know, everything was very strange for me for about almost, almost eight months. Um, kind of trying to get acclimated to the real world and, and things like that. So it was, it was an interesting time for me when I was going for my master's. So as we move forward, um, I start using more colorful things. Um, I'm, you know, I found my love of my life. So that changed my life and my outlook in life. So I start to use a lot more colors. So as you can see, as my wall hanging and across the board, um, I use a lot more colors and I use materials from um, old clothes from my family, you know, my mom, my dad, um, myself and my husband. And I, cause that's another industry that wastes a lot of stuff. I mean, we ship cargo loads of things, uh, you know, clothing that they don't sell or fabric and then we ship it to other countries. So it's another way of trying to raise consciousness and things like that. And I've gotten to welding and so, and printmaking is, is, is new to me and I'm really honored to be here right now with Dewey and Gabby and Marvella and everybody in the front office. Um, it's been a very interesting experience. Um, and I don't want to say what my print is, but it has something to do with veterans. Um, so, cause my dad wasn't a veteran, but he's no longer with me, but uh, he's, he's in the picture. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really happy to be here. And uh, any questions? Yeah, my, my question, I guess for, is for your sculpture. Um, you know, I know you, you, your work is about collecting uh, what has been discarded and giving them a new life. But what, um, what directed you into sculpture and putting them in sculpture and, and these forms um, versus another type of medium? Um, because that's what I've seen mostly in, in your body of work. And, and are these, do these shapes um, uh, kind of organic, uh, amorphic? shapes uh, have a meaning to you or is it, are they intentional? Are these shapes intentional? Well, I chose this material because we, we throw a lot of trash. So at least I do a tiny little percentage and I don't feel guilty as an artist. Um, Cause I, if I really want to try to raise environmental consciousness, consciousness among other people, then I need to be true to my, to my practice. I mean, I don't say every single thing I use is, you know, I found, but I try to use at least 85% because um, then I feel a lot better. 
Um, and I and I work intuitively. I don't have a preconceived idea. I just make things, and it's it's almost like a lot of people always say they look like trees, figures. Um, I always feel like um, I am I'm vibrating from a different level. Like I have a spiritual connection to upstairs, and I feel that I'm like their messenger, and that these are become spiritual beings and things like that. So I just I don't draw really, you know, before I do anything, sometimes I'll sketch something because maybe something in the middle of the night, something comes up and I'm like, oh my God, I got to get this down before I forget. But, um, but these are things that I I eventually want to go into public art. I really want to be making, you know, 10 feet, 12 feet metal sculptures and do a lot of different kind of styles and things like that. So I'm, 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 I'm ready for another juncture, but also this printmaking experience is, is opening another avenue for me. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. We're excited to have you here. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna open it up to, uh, we're gonna move into the questions um, and some will be open to everyone. And then I will also direct the questions to um, specific artists. So I, I'll begin by saying that, um, you know, I had a conversation with Gina yesterday and also Pedro and and then thinking about the questions for this, um, for today's panel. And I think when I approached it uh, initially is it's uh, some of the questions were obviously talking about healing uh, as art as a tool for healing, but I think that also came from a space of um, an assumption, assumptions and generalizing. And um, and then speaking with Gina a little more and also further is like, you know, everyone has a different experience, um, whether in the military or, and then out leaving the military. Everyone has different stories. Everyone's um, process and, and, and obviously path is, is very different. So with that, I'd like to open the question to every, anyone that would like to answer. Is there a memory you would like to share about your, your time in the service and or if you find art making as a process for healing? And I know some of you have already acknowledged that. Is there anyone that'd like to answer? Gina? I think I think art is is very like methodical. Um, when you get into it, it it kind of frees your mind and you get in your zone. And I think that's something like for us that served. I mean, maybe I'm speaking for myself. It's a way of escape because um, then you don't think about those things. Um, so it's sort of like you're in your zone and you're focused and you're making something. And I remember when I was over there. I mean, I couldn't really take much art supply, but I weaved. And that's something that's just meditative. And I, you know, I took some little bit of art stuff with me and I weave and I put earrings and threads and I found garbage bags and I weaved it and things like that. So I think it did help me a lot to kind of like not miss home so much because that's one thing I think that, you know, as veterans, we do miss our homes and our families. We miss our bed. We miss, you know, going in the kitchen and open the refrigerator and eating whatever we want or going to our favorite restaurants or just getting in a car. Because I remember coming back and getting in a car was really weird. It was like almost I was like relearning how to drive again. I was like, whoa, this is how to drive. So it's just it's just certain things that people that served in the military truly understand. It's just the little tiny things that many people take for granted that never served. Um, I think it's just those little tiny things. And, and we have a, a little bit different perspective on life in general. Anyone else, uh, Fanny? Yes, I'd like to add that I left the military as a conscientious objector, which was really traumatic for me because I I did not deploy for that reason. I had orders to go to Afghanistan, but I put paperwork in to leave the military. I just, my conscience did not agree with what was happening. I was 
vegetarian. I still am vegetarian. And so those, my, my beliefs of not hurting animals sort of, I, it came over to like not hurting humans. And I'm, I'm like, I need to leave. Like this doesn't make sense. And so a lot of my printmaking, um, the work became about food because like food was also like, so I was always thinking about like, okay, what am I going to eat? Because all of this is meat. So like food became like an important thing for me to, to um, think about when we were in the field, like they had to give me like special MREs and I have a, I didn't show this image either, but I have a screen print of an MRE that's specifically vegetarian just to sort of highlight my experience of like these objects um, became like really ingrained in my experience. And um, it was, I mean, sometimes when we were out in the field, I would get peanut butter jelly sandwiches and everybody else would get like really nasty food. <laughs> And so I, I always felt like I got treated a little special when it came to food. Um, and then um, just like the whole experience of just coming out as a conscientious objector, there's not very many of us that are my age. There, there are many throughout history, but um, that, that sort of informed my work when I left. I didn't plan on making work about the military because I wanted to leave it behind. But when I was in school, I needed subject matter. And that was the only thing that I had with me at the time. And so I started making work about the military. Like, even though I didn't want to, it just sort of started coming out of me. And that became like the healing process or, or, or the moment that I started I guess, um, thinking about what I had been through, um, being under the don't ask, don't tell policy, I was in a same sex relationship. And so all of that, all of those experiences um, affected my work and informed this, this new print that we made in, in your, your print studio at Self Help Graphics. So I'm really excited to, to share that story and like what this new print is about. Thank you, Fanny. Um, the next question is for the, the Peter Pedro, Pedro Peter. <laughs> is the, um, so both of you are, um, have been part of Self Help Graphics for such a long time. And can you share, and you both shared in your introductions when you first kind of uh, came into self-help graphics. Can you share a specific, um, a particular story um, and the impact that self-help graphics had on you? If, if there's a specific moment that you'd like to share. Well, I, I would just like to say that, first of all, I'm, I'm very, very, very proud of my service. Uh, time in Vietnam. That's, that's mainly where I spent my time. I, uh, unfortunately, though, I, I did uh, end up with PTSD uh, kind of badly. Uh, I, I, I do still have to go to veterans, uh, go through vet veterans programs uh, like the one I go to downtown Los Angeles. On, a, on an ongoing basis. Uh, other than that, um, the military, as far as art is concerned, I, 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 I don't really uh, use a lot of uh, those memories in my art. I would rather concentrate on uh, things that are important to me, like at the moment, you know, in time. So, um, I tried to also get involved. I, I was uh, a big uh, participant in the buildup of self-help graphics uh, in the in the in the beginning. So uh, and that and that was uh, that's kind of what kept me on an even keel, I guess, after the service, because it it, it was uh, it was a little bit of a hard adjustment uh, after leaving the service because right out of 
I mean, right out of Vietnam, I stepped right into the United States. Uh, so there was no like transition or anything. Like you're here one day and the very next day you're in, in LA and, and just, uh, you know, it was just crazy, crazy. And I was able, I was lucky enough to hook up with the program uh, that uh, hired, uh, there was about 140 of us veterans at the time. And we were all combat, vet combat veterans, Vietnam veterans. Um, and that, that, was a, that was a big help because I was able to connect with a lot of other veterans at the time. And I was actually able to uh, bring some of my friends into, uh, into self-help. So, but yeah, uh, self-help to me was like uh, the kind of the best thing that ever happened to me after I got out of the service. And that's kind of why I'm still in, try to be involved with self-help because that's how important it is to me. And the fact that uh, Sister Karen, the founder of Self-Help Graphics was an incredibly special person. Uh, and I can't even express that enough. Uh, so I, I just want to make sure I mention her name and just how wonderful of a mentor she really was to me. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. Pedro? Well, um, during the time that I was here working in the motion picture industry, uh, I was living in Granada Hills, but every weekend I would come to the barrio. Of course, the barrio, my aunts, my uncles, I had relatives that lived in, in Boyle Heights in East, in, over there at uh, Alicia Village. I had other relatives that lived uh, at Maravilla, uh, apartments over there. So I had that, that coming from, from on the weekends over here. And one of the weekends I was walking, I was uh, on a Sunday action. Uh, I met with uh, Wayne Healy and uh, David Moteo and they were painting a mural. And uh, so I stood like on the other side of the street and looking at them painting the mural. And finally I went across the street. When I saw them coming down, it started to rain. They came down from the scaffold. I went up to them and I introduced myself. And they told me about self-help graphics. And so uh, the following weekend, I showed up at, at uh, self-help graphics. And I'm just hanging around, you know, talking to other artists. I probably met Peter there. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, sometime later, I said, well, I should start doing some prints myself. I knew about printing. So, so I approached Sister Carol, and uh, the first thing she said to me is, are you a Chicano? And in my world in El Paso, Texas, we don't consider at that time, I'm of a different age, of course. And we said, no, no I'm not a Chicano. I said, uh, Chicano was my hoodlum uncle, <laughs> right? So, um, so she didn't let me print. And so, then she found out I was from El Paso and, and she apparently has some relatives in El Paso. So we started talking about El Paso and then she, she gradually said, okay, I'll let you print. And so uh, I started doing uh, monoprints and etchings and uh, she became a very good friend of mine, like actually a friend. And uh, I would go see her on the weekends or uh, I didn't work all the time, like. I would work on a, on a motion picture for three months and then I didn't work for two months or three months. And so I had some time off and, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to do art. So um, they would call me for work and say, no, I'm not, I'm not available right now. And I would do the art thing. And uh, so uh, I would go to her house and, and we would talk. And, and uh, during the time that she was at, at, uh, at self-help, she, she, she used to like to do photography. And she wanted to do uh, 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 gardens around the neighborhood. And so she asked me to go with her uh, because I could speak Spanish. And uh, again, I'm from Alabama. So, you know, she wasn't going to have any problems. 
when I went up to, to, to the ladies and said, can we photograph your garden, right? And so it was, a, it was a, and, and apparently she talked to her sisters up in uh, her, um, her convent or wherever, uh, I forget the name of the place there. Santa, I forget. It's St. Francis. Anyway, uh, Francis, huh? I believe it was. When I Sister Karen passed away. When Sister Karen passed away, um, the sisters actually approached me and said, we know who you are. And I, they asked me to be a pole bird. And um, I was very honored. Thank you, Pedro. I think Leo Limon shared a, story, a similar story with me about him driving her around to take pictures of the of the garden. <laughs> yeah, she loved doing that. But we would go walking from South Hall to the one over here on Gage. We would walk or walking through the neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah it was fun. And she did, she, we went and did some other uh, projects with her, uh, with Robert uh, Gutierrez and, yeah. And other people, and, you know, we take get in a van and go someplace. Yeah. And Thank you, Pedro. Um, and speaking of gardens or just nature itself, um, several of you incorporate uh, or hint at elements of nature, uh, whether imagery, color, or incorporating these uh, materials. Um, <clears throat> and Joe, your your work. Um, uh, does so, but also in a very kind of more a brusque a way uh, with mm -hmm. the materials that you use. Um, can you talk about like the animals um, in your work and more specifically, because I'm thinking about the print you created for self-help mm -hmm. and the installation of horses mm -hmm. you've done in the past. Can you talk a little more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think I hinted in my kind of my short spiel in the beginning um, about, you know, talking about these uh, Kind of beasts of burden and that was sort of a series um, that began to come about um so you know dealing with a lot of like again like just numerous themes about my experiences um they became sort of like kind of just an app vehicle uh, as a symbol for a lot of those complex themes um because you know we see pack animals and, and it's funny thing a lot of the sculptures actually aren't horses but i don't tell anyone that they're actually like oxen but it's like, that doesn't really matter. Sorry. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, most of them are. I think those, some of the lot of the images I can show are, are horses. And, and certainly the, uh, the prints are, um, uh, are of that. Um, and I, that sort of, uh, the, again, uh, as I mentioned, that kind of complex dichotomy of like, you know, of, 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 of utility pack animal and at the same time victim of this, of this military machine um, really hints at a vulnerability that I think a lot of, uh, a lot of imagery that I've used uh, isn't, you know, uh, kind of hits that uh, more effectively. Um, and also, like, I, I hope you guys don't hear those planes in the background, but whatever, there's a lot of planes in the background. Um, uh, and also, I, you know, when putting up an installation form, uh, the scale actually is, is quite dramatic. And I like, I like creating that, that tension as well. Um, because not only are they again imposing um, and sort of gravity defining, but uh, but also like also kind of vulnerable um, at times. So um, it, it's funny uh, using them as, as imagery and prints because they're they they're kind of in a different kind of situation. Um, so uh, yeah, I hope that that's actually a, a first of many that I'm trying to kind of make iterations for. So it's sort of the start of that. Um, thank you. And I'm, I'm going to direct this question to, um, to Gina and Yvette. Uh, what I found strikingly similar about both of your works is, although you both use very different mediums, um, is the pattern like or the intricate repetition in your works. So Gina, you've, you've talked about the meditative process already and and like you said that you used to weave uh, while you were in the service and you know, definitely I do not find that surprising because that's very much what your, your work really um, shows. Um, 
So, and then also Yvette, your patterns, I mean, the process of printing or engraving also, can you both elaborate a little more or anything else that you'd like to share about that process? Is it meditation and, um, and like how far is far enough when you go in there? And I guess that's a very, uh, uh, like, I guess for the printers, it's, it's something I, I constantly hear like, when you're engraving or, and, and for you, Gina, and weaving and, you know, collecting the materials, like how much do you insert and when do you stop? You can go, ahead, first, you go first. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I, mine is in some ways very um, meditative, uh, but it's, um, for me, a lot of the stuff goes from saying the Hail Mary for the rosary so um, a lot of my work has this symbol that is broken down that looks like the silhouette from a range card that you, that you uh, target on. And I started noticing that that silhouette uh, looks like a woman in the scarf in Iraq, which also looks like uh, the Virgin Mary. And then when you add the crosshairs, it looks like a halo. So there was this concept of feeling like I was pointing my weapon at the Virgin Mary over and over and over again while I was in Iraq. Um, and so I've always said the rosary as a form of, um, it calms me. I, it, it's that it is very meditative. And when I did seek out meditation, I, I used the, the rosary as a way to uh, continue to, because of that repetition. Um, and so that constant line work is often um, paired with me internally saying the Hail Mary over and over and over. So, so the answer is yes, it does become meditative uh, and it does function. I, 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 it, it does function as a way to calm me. Um, and, and so I, as far as like how much is um, enough, I often find that how much is enough is usually one step before I finish. <laughs> so meaning, meaning I always go one step too far. <laughs> and, and so I'm learning to actually say, I think I want to add one more layer and saying that's my key to saying stop. Um, and yeah, I'm getting there. I don't mind it, but. Good job. Gina? Um, well, there is a process to my madness. Um, I kind of, I'm very methodical as far as colors. Um, if I use a certain green, I don't repeat the same green. So I, I'm very much like that when I do my art. Um, even if the print may have a similar green, I may not use it. Um, so I don't know. I just, I just like that process. You know, it's like, you know, take time and repetition and just makes me flow away. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the following question is for the three women in the group. Um, I, I can't remember if it was Yvette or Fanny in our, during our first meeting that you had shared, um, you know, that you've met before, but that you also shared that the, there are very few female artists who are military veterans. And so when you connect, you form these long lasting bonds. Um, can um, any one of you or all of you share a little more about that, about these connections and how it's helped you with, as you move forward outside of the, outside of the military? I, I would just like to add, and I'll let you go Fanny, but I don't necessarily, know if it's that there are not a lot of women veteran artists. I think it's that we don't hear about them. Mm -hmm. And I think that often uh, there the, is the case that um, sometimes you may express that you're a veteran and that leads down a path of a lot of other questions of whether or not, I feel like I often have to validate my service I often feel like I have to, um, it's not so much anymore, but I think in the early stages, I, I felt like um, I have to update my bio, but I think a lot of that bio, the, the whole creation of that 
was a lot of validation of no, in fact, I was here. No, in fact, I did do this. And um, I've, I'm learning to not necessarily care so much about that, that, that uh, let, let the work speak for itself and let the process speak for itself. And, and but I, I do, I am, I am drawn to other uh, women veteran artists simply because I think we need to hold each other up. At, when I first got out of the service, I didn't want to be acknowledged as a female veteran. I wanted to be acknowledged as a veteran because I spent my whole military career saying I'm a soldier first. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I negated the female, the femininity to be able to succeed. And so when I got out, I, I rallied around that same concept. And, and what I've realized is that it's the women veterans that have that, that my career exists today because of a group of women veterans in Wisconsin that literally pulled me in and said, what do you need here? And they pushed me forward. And they literally, when I was pushing back, kept pushing when, even when I didn't want it. And I owe my career to those women. Um, and so uh, I, I think we just need a, I'm learning to embrace, um, I think the reality that there are specific stories that we need to tell together um, and, and that camaraderie is what men have had for the existence of time th throughout in the system. So not all the time. I don't wanna, I don't wanna say there are men that, have, that didn't have a support system when they got out, so. Any other thoughts? Yes, I'd like mm -hmm. to say that when I left the military, I and because of the way I had gotten out, I didn't want to talk about my time in service. I, I didn't know that there were other female, like veteran artists, and and I got invited. <laughs> it's so funny. I got invited to a party in San Francisco, and there was um, I had done. I, I was still in school and I had done a research project on a woman named Amber Hoy. And I go to this party and, and I get introduced to her. And Amber Hoy um, is also a photographer and she used to live here in the Bay Area. And I, it was so funny, I, I was like, I, I did a presentation on your work at my school and we just both laughed because here we, we are like standing in front of each other. And, and then after that, I, you know, it opened up this gate where I met Yvette and I met this whole network that they had already been connected to and they had already formed. And, and for me, that was like a, a breath of fresh air because I just didn't know it existed. And so um, I echo what Yvette was saying earlier is, is that um, I, we just, we just don't know like who they are. Like they just haven't come forward. They don't identify as both veteran and an artist. I feel like we all struggle with those two words um, combined because I think the first thought or the first impression is that the work is about the military because veteran is included. But, um, and I think that's why like my photography, I tend, I, I shy away from military themes because I don't want to be labeled as a veteran artist. Like I'm an artist first. Yes, I served in the military, but I also wanna like separate the two, um, the two, you know, I do, you know what I mean. <laughs> and I'd like to say thank you for the introduction to Gina because Gina, I was looking at your webpage earlier this week and because uh, I knew the question of comparison was coming up for us and I, I wanted to see your artwork and I was so excited and, and we've already, the three of us have already decided we're going to be talking offline at a different time. But, but for, for me, I think that there's so many similarities um, in, in the way we process how to create the work that I just wanna say thank you for the introduction because like Fanny said, sometimes we just don't know and when we get connected, we're able to find these, these new, new relationships. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, for me, it's, it was when I was in the military, I only met one person who was an artist and an art teacher in all the years I was in. So I didn't even know there were people out there. I mean, I knew there was 
some artists out there, you know, um, I can't think of his name, but he did a lot of paintings. Um, but so now it's more interesting because like I, I'm now no Fanny and I know Yvette and I also know the other gentleman too. And because, the, you know, art is such a total separation from the military because, you know, art is free form, you know, it's more, you know, you could be political, you could say what you want to say. Um, because when, when I was in the military, still serving in the military, I had to be a little more careful with my opinions because otherwise I would be, you know, especially I was an officer, I had to be a little more careful about those things. So now that I'm out, woo, you know, I can make party and I can express and I can say what I want. Um, so it's a very freeing experience, um, you know, coming from a square box and now you, the world's at my, our oasis and things like that. So. You know, and so it's really a weird dichotomy, you know, that, you know, we don't, you know, there's, you got art and you got military and they don't go together. <laughs> you know, they're two separate worlds. And so it's, it's really nice to meet all of you. Um, Cause now I know that there's other people out there and, and, you know, and it's also talking about camaraderie. I mean, that's something that, you know, I was talking to some people here that that was something I, I really had early, early in my career, but as time went on, it just dissipates because, you know, as you move up in rank, it becomes a lot different, it becomes a lot more political and who you know, and things like that. And it's not something I, I don't play those games. So, but it's nice to maybe hopefully build friendships and, and build, you know, a crit group, you know, like, Hey, what are you doing? Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. What are you doing? Or, or, you know, anything, you know, because, I mean, we all have ex different experience, you know, especially Peter and Pedro, I commend you for serving at that time. I know military was a lot more difficult at that time. And, and I really honor you for your service. Um, I mean, we, we uh, younger ones had a little bit easier, just a little bit. I don't say <laughs> fully, but, you know, some of us have seen things and some of us haven't. And that's what something I was talking to Marvella yesterday that, you know, some of us have seen a lot more and some of it. So it really depends. So I just want to know, I'm very happy to be part of this group. And I've, I've learned, you know, yes, uh, and I echo that, you know, I'm very um, honored to have had this experience and get to know um, all of you. Um, and, you know, for me, it's been an educational experience. Um, and having known a couple of you uh, now that I've been here at Self-Help Graphics for two years and getting to know more of your story, it, it's re been really a privilege. And then for this last question that I want to uh, pose for every single one of you is, can you, um, so I know Gina is, um, is joining us from Baker, well, today from LA, but she's from Bakersfield. Uh, Joe, you will be moving on to North Carolina. Yes, I'll be. I'll be teaching yeah. at a uh, at a, at Wake Forest. It's a small little arts college there. And then Yvette from Wisconsin, Pedro and Peter in Los Angeles, and Fanny from Oakland. Can you suggest um, it places or groups in your community that provide art services to the military veterans? And then we will write them down and we will share it on our YouTube when this is posted. Fanny? Okay, so I used to work for the Alameda County, which is the county that I live in. And I, they have, um, it's called the Alameda County Arts Commission and they get a yearly grant um, that's, that they've um, formed the program um, called uh, Veterans Art Project, and they have a partnership with the Oakland Vet Center. And so anybody who's a combat veteran or has experienced military sexual trauma can go to the Vet Center and they can, it's a free benefit from the VA and the Arts Commission, they do, I, I helped them do several art projects and I led some of those our projects, we did photography and we did cyanotypes. So that was a really, really good partnership and experience for me to go through. And a lot of, a lot of 
healing happened, I would say a lot of people tapped into a lot of old photographs from Vietnam that they had not touched since they got put away. So it was, it was really um, heartfelt every time we did a project. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I was going to say that I, I haven't uh, come across a program like that, but uh, at the downtown VA, we, you know, we do have an area for some of us veterans who are in a particular program uh, that we can do a lot of different art uh, little projects. They're not big projects, but uh, but they're good enough for us for our needs at, at the time. And, and other than that, I have uh, I have won a couple of uh, uh, first place awards with uh, the National Veterans Art Program, uh, and and that was great because I got to travel to Kentucky one year, and I I went to New, Reno, Nevada. Uh, some years after that but and so those are some great programs if uh if you can get into those programs and i and i, and I would highly recommend uh, for the veterans that uh, they, they try to get into that program uh the national arts uh, veterans program it's great i know they're having a little trouble this year because of the COVID thing so it didn't all work out but hopefully next year it'll get back on track Um, anyone else? One last person, Yvette? Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, Pedro? Pedro or Yvette? Yes. yes. Yeah, well, I, uh, I've been involved with that program for uh, Peter is talking about. Uh, actually, he introduced me to it some years ago, and uh, I participated three years on the, uh, on the, on the uh, art program. And uh, so I did uh, uh, submit some work during those uh, times. And I also am involved with another project in, um, in, in, in called the Back Arts Program. And that comes from uh, uh, Fallbrook. It's over there at Temecula. And uh, what they do there is uh, you're able to do bronze sculptures. So you, you're able to work with bronze. And um, I don't know what's, uh, you know, because of the COVID, uh, we don't know what's going on over there, but uh, I was involved over there for a while doing some, uh, some uh, bronze work. So uh, that's another, uh, it's called vetarts.com. Uh, you, know, you can go to the internet and find it. Uh, and it's a very good program. Uh, anybody that's interested in doing sculpture. Thank you, Pedro. And finally, Yvette. Um, just a couple national programs. Um, um, Fanny may know a couple of these, but Warrior Writers is for writing, but they also do art. Uh, they connect with artists and as part of their writing workshops. And then out in Iowa near me is Combat Paper Project, or if you wanna work with Frontline Arts out in New Jersey, they, are, they broke off from Combat Paper and, and um, were trained with Combat Paper, but Drew Cameron's out in Iowa and David Keefe runs Veteran, um, I'm sorry, Frontline Arts in New Jersey, which I highly recommend because they do printmaking at Frontline Arts. And I've partnered with Combat Paper uh, through the Veteran Print Project. So obviously Veteran Print Project nationally um, and then um, at the Wisconsin Veterans Museum, I created a monthly drink and draw program. So you can, we've been doing it virtually during COVID, but we do have in-person events where uh, we select items from the collection for you to draw. But really the idea is just to hang out and draw and get to know a little bit about our collection. Um, and virtually we have guest artists. So I might be reaching out to some of you, but yeah. <laughs> um, but guest artist to host a uh, drink and draw. And so, oh, and Warrior Songs, Jason Moon um, basically does veteran print project, but with song songwriters. He pairs songwriters with veterans to share a conversation and then they create an, a new song and a new album drops on August 5th about Vietnam veterans. Oh. Well, thank you so much of it. And thank you everyone in this panel. Uh, Lulu, do we have any questions on YouTube? Okay, 
Um, so there are no questions. I want to thank everyone again in this group and we will internally meet again to share everyone's prints. And Lulu, can you share your screen again? I want to give the audience a sneak peek to everyone's prints. They're just details. Okay, so here we have um, the, the prints for um, the group. And um, they're just uh, details of, of each print. And um, yeah, you they're going to be unveiled on June 15th. So the month of June, we will be featuring our artists, our annual print fair for the entire month of, of June. And each week we'll be unveiling the different ateliers that we created last year, um, or actually wrapping up this year as well, like the Veterans Art Project. And um, we are going to also highlight a different other other types of uh, prints that have been created in this in this past weeks as well. And if you can uh, skip to the next page, please. These are up upcoming programs via YouTube that will feature um, uh, some of the artists in this group. So on May thirty first, as part of in celebration of Memorial Day, we will host a Memorial Day reflection and meditation led by uh, Sochil Palomera. And uh, it's a meditation, half hour meditation, uh, remembering falling, so fallen soldiers and the victims of war. On June 7th, we will uh, feature the conversation with the youth leader and former youth committee member, Jake Montoya, in conversation with artist Leo Limon. And finally, on June 16th, we, as part of our printmaking, um, people's printmaking, I guess, a month, we are going to uh, feature Yvette's reduction screen printing technique. And please uh, be, uh, keep an eye out for a workshop that Joe uh, did for us that we will be featuring out in the, in the coming months. Uh, so with that said, again, Thank you, each and every one of you, for sharing your stories, uh, giving us an insight to, to your experiences um, as artists as an, and as military veterans, and also educating the audiences about, you know, your, your experiences. And um, everyone, and for the public, thank you for joining us, and uh, we will see you next month, or please uh, feel, uh, join us for the annual print fair in June. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. And say hi to Dewey. Hi, Dewey. Hi, everybody. Dewey. Follow me again.